a very warm welcome to our show. First of all, you are given 21 days to make a decision, either plead guilty or appeal the case. You've chosen the latter. On which grounds? Yes. Um, Bukadi, thank you very much for having me in the studio. Uh, firstly, let me mention that um, I reluctantly agreed to, uh, to come here purely because I do not uh, conduct litigation by uh, public media. But uh, we hit by deadlines, uh, instructions, and hence I'm here. Mm. Thank you. All right, thank you for coming through as we cleared it out. Uh, first of all, we had your client about two weeks ago chatting about uh, his fight for his B sample after his A sample came out positive. Yes. Uh, what's the difference now? Where is this case now? Yes, um, Bongadi, we are at the stage where we have received the B sample, as you know, and uh, our instructions at the moment is to um, uh, appeal uh, that particular uh, decision in its entirety. And uh, the grounds upon which we intend uh, to dispute that decision is that there was, at this stage at least, a procedural irregularity at the testing stage of the whole process. Are you care to explain a bit about the irregularities? And do you feel that there might be loopholes in uh, Said's case regarding this? Yes, indeed, there, there, are, uh, there are procedural irregularities. But unfortunately, uh, I will not be in a position to divulge uh, those uh, grounds at this juncture. Is there a case, perhaps, I know you're not going to say much in terms of in-depth about the case, is there a case, perhaps, of tampering in this case? Because the, the player has, he's trying to clear his name, he's said in the past that, you know, he doesn't feel that he's a, a guy who does take banned substances deliberately. Is there a case, perhaps, of tampering on the part of states? Yes, look, you know what, I think that uh, there, is, uh, there is possibly a, a case of tempering, but that is not, uh, is not uh, in my opinion, a deliberate act. They did not deliberately temper, but there is indeed a, a, a possibility of tempering um, in terms of which the, uh, the procedural irregularity comes into play. To your knowledge, has there been cases where they have been tempering? No, I've not, uh, I've not uh, come across that, uh, that case, but this is going to be a test case in that regard. Some may argue that, you know, Chile Boy has been, in, you know, in this process before. In 2014, of course, he tested positive for anabolic steroids while playing his trade in France for Toulouse. He then faced a two-year ban. How different, how different will this case be uh, in terms of the one that he suffered at the hands of while playing in France? Yes, look, I, I think that you need to judge each case, I mean, each case with, on its own merit. I don't think that uh, we can just uh, uh, look at the previous uh, dealings and then judge this case on, on, on that basis. No, I think that is completely wrong. So I was not involved in the previous cases. I'm involved in this particular one, and I'm going to, uh, to deal with it uh, on its own merits. Douglas, it's not often that when a player tests positive for A and B sample, then he finally clears his name. I mean, what are you hoping to achieve from this? Where do you feel that you have a strong case besides the irregularities? Do you feel that Said does perhaps have uh, instances where they've gotten tests wrong? Yeah, look, um, I, I, I've, I've not, I'm not aware and I've not um, come across um, a situation where they were found to, to have um, violated the regulations or otherwise, so I don't know whether, but in this particular instance, I can confirm that uh, there were irregularities and we, I'm going to put forward those irregularities in due course. Talk us through the process now, because I mean, we did mention that the, this case will now go to the tribunal. Um, how long are we hoping to get an outcome? Yes, look, what I can tell you is that uh, I quite frankly want to deal with this matter and I hope that uh, SAIDs will cooperate with me. Uh, we want to, uh, to deal with this matter as soon as possible, in fact, as a matter of, uh, of agency. So now the matter will proceed to the tribunal, and then if the tribunal rules in favor of my client, and indeed my client is ready and is willing to, uh, to go back to the field. Yes, so the matter will go to the tribunal, and if uh, the decision is made there, my client will, will, will go straight back to the field. Let's talk a bit about your client. Of course, we spoke to him about two weeks ago. Yes hasn't come forward after the bill sample. How is he at the moment? I mean, he, he's been out of rugby for quite some time, obviously playing his trade for the Sharks. How does he feel? Does he feel hopeful that his career might still be on track? 
Yes, look, I mean, I mean, firstly, I must mention that, I mean, this whole process, as you can imagine, is devastating and indeed is, uh, is uh, quite frankly devastated by the whole uh, uh, issue. Um, but he's quite confident uh, that, uh, um, that uh, um, he will be uh, vindic uh, uh, vindicated in the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the process itself, um, how long does it often take? Uh, how long will South Africans know when Chilipoy, you know, if whether you will continue playing or not? Yeah, I think that uh, I can certainly say possibly um, maybe uh, before, before, I mean, in three months to four months from now, yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well, let's hope that we get an outcome sooner rather than later because, I mean, at 32, certainly doesn't have a lot of years left in him as a player, but obviously a very talented player having also played for the Supremax. Douglas, thank yes. you very much. Indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, All right, that was Chilipo Ralapele's lawyer, Douglas Mulipo of ENS Africa in studio.